Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. Budged, huh? No, sir, Pa. She just sits there rocking and singing about home. I thought putting up the cabin would get her over them homesick blues. Made them worse. Just look at her. I'm lonesome and blue and miserable too. Just one. She looks sadder than a hog in a dried up mud hole. <laughs> Maybe helps on the way. What you mean? Lester Flat and Earl Scruggs are supposed to be coming to town. Well, let's tell Granny. Well, that'll cheer her right up. No, wait. I gotta hear from them first. It ain't just for certain he's coming. I sure hope they do. Well, she's even got my critters all gloomed up. Pretty near as hard as Jeff. Will. Where's he? He's in the kitchen trying to womp up some vittles. Two days without Granny's cooking, he's got that poor boy climbing the wall. No more to roam where friends is so dear and the air is so clear. Don't wanna stay here. I won't go home. Oh. <laughs> gonna have all my critters a bawling. Dogged if I ain't about ready to cut loose and blubber myself. <laughs> I sure hope Lester and Earl get to town. Fellas, you want me to put that call through to the Clampets now? Yeah, we're about through rehearsing. Okay. You know, Lester, if we hurry, we might get up there in time for some of Granny's biscuits and red-eyed gravy. Yeah. Come to think of it, Earl, I've had enough rehearsal. Me too, Lester. Me too. <laughs> Is this the Clampett residence? Yes, it is. I'm calling for Lester Flat and Earl Scruggs. Well, I'm sorry, they ain't here. <laughs> Hello? This is the stage manager at the Oak Room. Yes, sir. Lester Flat and Earl Scruggs are here. Oh, I'm glad to know that. There was a fellow looking for him. Thank you. <laughs> one there. Yes, sir, and I'm trying to cook biscuits and red-eyed gravy, so if you don't mind... I'll... Don't, don't hang up. Hey, are you the fella that's calling for Lester Flat and Earl Scruggs? Yeah, yeah, that's me. Well, you can find them at the Oak Room. <laughs> Hello. 
I'm sorry, fellas. I keep calling the Clampets and some goof keeps answering. Jethro. <laughs> he must be the cook. Jethro? <laughs> well, he said he was making biscuits and red-eye gravy. Come to think of it, Earl, I could use some more rehearsal. Me too, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Shoot at. That dad blasted biscuit. <laughs> Take it easy, Jethro. Uncle Jed, if I don't get me some home cooked vittles, I'm going to drop down dead right here in front of your eyes. <laughs> that time it's speaking. Oh, hi, Miss Jane. Ask her, can she cook? I heard that. Tell Jethro I can cook it. I'll be right over and prove it. Well, yeah, maybe it would be best if you just come on over. Hot dog! Hey, Miss Jane, this is Jethro. Please, hurry, quick. I need you desperate. Bye! He needs me. At last the dear boy realizes we were meant for one another. <laughs> I'm here, Jethro! Oh, Miss Jane, I've never been so glad to see anybody in my whole life. Jethro, you impetuous Romeo, put me down. <laughs> this is all so sudden. No, it ain't. I couldn't sleep last night for thinking about it. Are you serious? I sure am. I ain't hardly at in two days. <laughs> I feel like Guinevere. Do you feel like Lancelot? I don't know what that is. Lancelot and Guinevere, they're like Tristan and Isolde, Heloise and Abelard. Well, I'm sure they're real good, but... Let's start with biscuits and red-eyed gravy. <laughs> Biscuit all your critters out of harm's way. We're gonna light a powder keg under Granny. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Clampett, if this is going to upset Granny so drastically, I I'll let Ellie Mae show me how to make biscuits and red-eye gravy. Oh, no, no. Uh, you see, I was kind of counting on this to help snap Granny out of her blue miseries. <laughs> we have a double goal. For me, the way to my intended heart shall be revealed through my acquisition of the means to gratify his gustatory desires. <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh, like I was saying, uh, you best take cover if Granny commences throwing things. Uh, got everybody except old Duke. He was just too tired to move. Well, Miss Jean, reckon this is it? I am ready. Good luck. <laughs> Miss Jean is taking over your kitchen. Yes, I want your recipe for biscuit and red-eye gravy. Look out. <laughs> I'm lonesome and blue. And <laughs> that is the first time I've ever known Granny to give away a cooking secret. Oh, I'm, I'm afraid it's still a secret. Listen to this recipe for biscuits. Into one whole heap of flour, stir two middling amounts of buttermilk, <laughs> add a, a smidgen of... I don't understand. Well, them's mountain measurements. <laughs> a smidgen is just a teensy little bit, just like that. Three smidgens makes one pinch. Four pinches equals one little bit. 
Four little bits equals one middling amount. Three middling amounts equals one right smart, and it takes five right smarts to make a whole heap. Oh. Hey, Uncle Jed, guess who's here? I give you three guesses. Lester Flat and Earl Scruggs. Well, how'd you get it so quick? Oh, I kind of got the hint from them two fellas standing behind you. <laughs> how are you, boys? Oh, good to see you, Jed. Just standing. How are you? Oh, Twix Grass and hey, uh, oh, boys, uh, you met Miss Hathaway? Oh, sure have. Good to see you again, ma'am. Howdy, Miss Hathaway. How do you do? Miss Jean, if you ain't never heard Lester and Earl, you got a real treat coming. But Mr. Clappett, I am a dedicated aficionado of these plectrum Paganinis. <laughs> <laughs> An amazing recorded repertoire, which I am fortunate enough to possess, is a veritable musical encyclopedia of our ethnic heritage. <laughs> I never cease to marvel at the coruscating polyphonic textures produced by their artistry and virtuosity. Uh-huh. Uh, like I say, if you ain't ever heard of them, you got a real treat coming. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I must get to my biscuit making. Hey, let me watch. Mine come out a little crisp. <laughs> say, Jed, what happened to Granny? Hope she ain't sick. Just homesick, Earl, but your music is just the medicine she needs. Lead us to her, then. We'll do our plectrum picking best. <laughs> <Are we? laughs> Granny, my critters and me got together a band to play you some cheerful music. I don't want to hear no cheerful music played by no critters. <laughs> oh, come on now, Granny. Look how anxious they is. <laughs> They're all ready to commence playing. <laughs> I didn't mean to commence playing now. <laughs> they can do better than that if I get them started together. <laughs> Queenie, but, but you didn't hear Cousin Bessie play the banjo yet. Well, she's the best one. I ain't listening to no ape play no banjo. <laughs> you ready, boy? Let me get my fingers warmed up just a little. See who was making that music? I've seen him. Especially that little goomer with the banjo. Granny. <laughs> uh, wait, boys. Uh, Granny didn't mean that. She ain't herself. Why don't you try a uh, little girl in Tennessee? That's one of her favorites. Are you game, Dr. Platt? Lead off, Dr. Scrooge. <laughs> Tennessee, I know she's waiting there for me. Now, don't tell me that. <laughs> Lester Flat and Earl Scruggs. Hello, Granny. Howdy, Granny. Well, come in, come in, but don't quit playing and singing. <laughs> Lead on. All long, long time ago when I left my home. Down in the hills of Tennessee, left the sweetest little girl that was ever in this world. Down in the hills of Tennessee, oh, the little girl of mine in Tennessee, I know she's waiting there for me. So 
Someday I sit down in that country town with that little girl. Sorry, dear, I know all the way that you are treating me. So I ramble all around, and nothing could be found to take place of her in Tennessee. Oh, the little girl of mine in Tennessee, I know she's waiting there for me. Someday I sit down in that little country town with that little girl of mine in Tennessee. <laughs> with my biscuits and red-eyed gravy. Patience, dear boy. It's difficult enough to follow Granny's recipes without heckling. <laughs> Miss Jane, I never seen nothing so pretty in all my life. <laughs> it smells so good, too. Now, Jethro, you must learn to control your emotions when I'm busy at the stove. <laughs> See, I shall be cooking for you all the time. You will? Of course. Three meals a day. I ain't cutting down to three meals a day. No, ma'am. Uh-uh, not me. No. Well, the way to a man's heart. Oh, the biscuits are ready. I'll get them. I'll get them. Jethro, this is woman's work. Now, you sit down. I shall serve you the food, and we'll discuss our future. Our what? Well, there are plans to be made, dear boy. For example, when should we have the nuptials? Well, let's have them with the biscuits and red-eyed gravy. <laughs> Side meat and sorghum. <laughs> Granny, how does it feel to be playing with Lester Flat and Earl Scruggs? Oh, they ain't bad. <laughs> I've played with worse. <laughs> Jade, could we step outside for a minute? Well, sure, Lester. We'll be right back. Ellie, honey, run up to the house and fetch us a jug. A body stroke gets a little dry singing harmony. <laughs> right, Earl? Right, Granny. <laughs> Say, Granny, could I have a look at that auto harp? Why, sure. But don't get your hopes up. It just ain't anybody who can play that like me. Oh, I know that. <laughs> little show off. You know something? This looks like the old harp the Carter family used to have. That's where it come from. The Carter family give it to the Pickard family. The Pickard family give it to Cousin Pearl. Cousin Pearl give it to Jethro, and Jethro give it to me. Can Jethro play it? Tried for five years. Never could learn how. <laughs> five years? First four and a half, he thought he was supposed to blow into it. <laughs> well, what do you think, Jed? I got to admit, I never seen Granny happier than when she was singing and playing with you and Earl. Well, that'd be a real favor to us, and I think the folks would enjoy seeing her sitting up there on the stage in her rocking chair, playing her auto harp and singing, and we could give her a solo with a spotlight on her. Lester, I reckon that'd be just about the high spot of her life. Well, let's ask her then. We got one problem, mm -hmm. name of Jethro. Now, if Granny goes off traveling with you and Earl, that boy's gonna hungry up and skinny to death. Well, ain't Miss Hathaway cooking for him? Forgot about that. Hey, things might work out just fine. Oh, I'm, I'm a failure! I'm a failure! My biscuits are 
Terrible! <laughs> Please don't cry, Miss Jane. Your biscuits are better than mine. Least wise they saw. <laughs> <laughs> And your gravy smells just scrumptious. The gravy's good? Well, I bet you it would be if I could get it out of the bowl. <laughs> it sure did set up fast. <laughs> Metro, you gotta drive me to town right away. Well, yes, ma'am. But first, you gotta fix me some biscuits and red-eyed gravy. I ain't got time for that. I'm going on the stage. To where? I'm going on the show business stage with Lester and Earl. I'm going to play the auto harp and I'm going to sing. And I got a lot of things to do before that. Finally learned how to play this thing, you know? Watch. <laughs> now go fetch the truck. Well, I'm too weak to drive. Blowing one note on that thing's made me dizzy. <laughs> I'll drive you, Granny. That's one talent I do have. Fine. Come on. Where's Granny going? She's going into town. Now I ain't got nobody to make me biscuits and red-eyed gravy. Now, calm down, boy. Jethro, you happen to be looking at one of the finest biscuit bakers in the state of Tennessee. You? No, Earl here. <laughs> What's the matter with E? <laughs> they do fight eating, don't they? <laughs> now, don't you worry about a thing. Earl's specialty is biscuits, and mine is red-eyed gravy. <laughs> Them's the best biscuits I ever ate in my whole life. How many you put away, boys? Oh, it was about a dozen, wasn't it, Earl? Only 11. But there was extra big pans. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it's their pleasure, Jed, but I thought you said Jethro was a light eater. He is. He commences eating the minute it gets light. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen. Oh, Miss Hathaway, did you bring Granny back? No, I left her at the beauty shop. Beauty shop? She said she'd meet you later at the club. Boys, you worked a regular miracle. Granny wouldn't go near a beauty shop before this. We better be moving along, Lester. Yeah, you're all invited to the show. We'll save you a table right down front. We'll be there. Indeed we will. Hmm. Oh, thank you, Fred. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been a little bit worried about her special surprise guest, but Fred tells me that she's here and she's ready. Earl, tell the folks a little bit about her. Well, folks, she's a little granny woman from way back yonder in the hills, and she plays an auto harp pretty near as old she is. Yeah, and she's going to do authentic folk songs just like they've been done for hundreds of years. Now, here she is, her first time in front of an audience, little granny.
now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.